This is Richard Wolff from Democracy at Work with another Wolff response. The problems of U.S. capitalism are becoming exponentially aggravated. I'm going to give you a few milestones and then draw out the implications of them. In June of 2020, the government's deficit was $864 billion. For most of American history, even recent history, that would have been a very high number for a year. We had it for a month. What does it mean? It means that our economic system is on life support. The government is injecting $864 billion more dollars than it takes out of the economy in taxes. That's called stimulus, boost, whatever you want. Alongside that, the Federal Reserve is pumping trillions of new dollars created as the Fed is allowed to do, being our central bank, and pumped into the economy, usually through loans to banks, insurance companies, and now increasingly to non-financial corporations whose bonds the Federal Reserve uses new money to buy. That means corporations in America who are in deeper debt than they have ever been in our history are now increasingly in debt to the United States government directly or indirectly. Corporate America is now living off of government welfare payments. The difference between the welfare for corporations and the welfare for the poor is exactly what you would imagine to be the difference. Namely, the welfare for corporations is immense compared to the welfare for the poor. It's even immense compared to the welfare given to the 30 plus million Americans collecting unemployment insurance or those who got the $1,200 checks some weeks ago. The American economy isn't a private capitalism anymore. That was always half fakery anyway, given the many ways that the government has always supported, subsidized private capitalism. But now it's a joke. It is a totally state dependent system. And that's going to make all kinds of difficulties for the conservatives who always needed to maintain, to reinforce the fantasy of the private sector. But I want to focus on something else with you. We have an accumulating set of problems facing U.S. capitalism. The government deficit the endless creation of new money, those are only parts of the story. We have growing reality that the rest of the world is progressing economically, in several cases faster over a longer period of time than the United States. The ability of the United States around the world to call the shots economically is shrinking. That's why you have the attack on the Huawei Corporation or the demonizing of China, once again playing the tired old game of refocusing Americans away from the economic problems at home to pretend that they're all caused by bad people overseas. Mr. Trump has been expert at that as someone like him would be. Mexicans, Chinese, Europeans, Canadians, enemy of the month, you might call it. But the problems are not going away. They're getting worse. The greater difficulty of exporting comes back to haunt the domestic economy just as the pandemic, just as the growing debts make them more difficult. Likewise, our unresolved, festering 
racial discrimination and divisions have come back to haunt us. These growing problems, having been kicked down the road in American politics for so long, substituting a commission, a report, an investigation, a heartfelt statement by a politician, but no real change, are now having the effect anyone and everyone could have, and many did, predict. Too many problems coming together at the same time produce an extraordinarily difficult situation. But those, so, those same failures, the denial, for example, by the Republican and Democratic Party establishments that the problem is as severe as I'm describing it, the denial of all the steps that got us here, the re realization denied that we've had three crashes of capitalism in this new century, dot-com in 2000, subprime mortgage in 2008, and now coronavirus in 2020. We call them by the names of the trigger because we don't want to face that our system is so unstable that it plagues us every four to seven years, no matter what we try to do. The system is unstable. The system produces unsustainable inequality. We know it. We live it. We see it. Even in the pandemic, the richest man in America becomes richer as 50 million people have to file unemployment. A system is broken. And for the first time, it behoves those of us who are economists and looking at this to share with you the beginning of a sense we may not come out of this. Or to be more accurate, we may decide that this capitalist system has failed in too many ways for too many people to be tolerable anymore. Much as at a certain point, feudalism, slavery, kingdoms, monarchies, became intolerable. You can't do it. The fact that 5% of the world lives in the United States, but we have 25% of the corona cases and 25% of the corona deaths, reveals a level of failure that is matched by remembering that in this country over the last 18 weeks, unemployment quadrupled from 4.5% to 17 or 18%, at least. Whereas in Germany, for example, unemployment went from 5% to 6%. Our economy is busted. Our public health system is busted. Our rich country has got the richness in so few hands that the rest of us are exposed and vulnerable. And when it reaches this kind of point, and when the people in charge deny and pretend everything is something, they're going to just run another presidential campaign, just like the other one, you know you're in a situation where the problems now exceed the capability of this political system, these parties, these leaders, to do what's necessary to fix it. I wish I didn't have to give you this report, but the economic news would make any other kind of report dishonest. This is Richard Wolff for Democracy at Work.